So I'm here um, with Judith Rodriguez. I'm Anna from Girls on Key. This is the Monday Book Club. Today we're talking about this book, which is The Hanging of Many Thwaites. And so first of all, we're going to have a reading from Judith. Ah, right. So I'll, I'll hand over to Judith to read from her book. What I'm going to read you is part three of the ballad. Uh, this is when Minnie's in real trouble. Uh, she was in Melbourne in the 1890s, which was an awful depression. And people were saying, if I don't get a job by tonight, I'll drown myself in the Yarra and then actually do it. So that's how desperate it was. Minnie came from England. She landed in Australia at the age of 18. Her parents were God-fearing Christians. Her father was a hatter uh, in London. Many thwaites she thought of her mother. She still had her jacket and her black gem hat. But Rudy's in Pentridge, Teddy's thrown her over. She's needing a start. Those were the years of the Great Depression. Those were the years of the human glut. Minnie thought of Chelsea and tried to be respectable. But Mother had food. Minnie had the belly. Yes, and Minnie had guts. It's 1893. Minnie's shifting round and eating scant. But babies don't stop. And it gives you ideas as you sink into want. A woman must live and ladies need sewing. But orders fall off and she's down to pence. Little Gladys to feed and the new baby growing. Mm, she's thinking of the easy life at Walker Dance. A woman must live and girls must have virtue. They'll pay you to take off the fruit of sin. And take it off too to Fitzroy and further so it never is seen. Teddy said, baby's nothing easier. You see Mark will walk it and ever in debt, never in trouble, takes her leisure, never did a hand's turn, sitting on treasure. She takes the money and mums do the rest. So Minnie sets up in baby farming and she's feeling very lonely because her boyfriend's gone off and her husband's in prison for not paying the uh, payments on a pram that they'd hired. Here she is with the boyfriend. As they sit down to the next and the next cup, Minnie says, Teddy, my heart is sore. I think I've got baby Creighton fixed up. I need love too, and you love me no more. Twelve months, thirteen, fourteen, Rudy will soon be out again and coming home. I'm in a pickle. Well, he's no prude. Still, he's bound to us where the new babe's from. As they tipped back the next and the next cup, Teddy said, Minnie, your head's not right. He can't mend matters. He needs a leg up and he can't skite. All you do is keep rocking cradles. Hear that kid yowl? And counting the pence and buttering up the bleeding heart neighbours. And give it a rest if you've got any sense. One step, two steps, three steps. Minnie made to the cradle. She was good and mad. He's a brute and he's a bully. She grabbed the tiny little worry of a baby, and then it was dead. Minnie stood stock still, stone cold sober. Was it me that did it, or was it before? He emptied the bottle and rolled on over. Oh, you cunt, that's torn it. You're up for the law. Teddy, oh, Teddy, I must find a baby. Oh, track down another the mother won't check. First thing in the morning, go out with a spade, see? And make sure the dirt is up over its neck. Early next morning, there's ten-year-old Harriet starting at five bob a week as maid. So hide the body, hand it to bury it, send for a spade. Lock the back door, dig in the backyard, cover the baby. You'll see it no more. She scrubbed the spade and returned it by Harriet and took in yesterday's milk, turned sour. Here's a day for angels to shudder. Anyone thinking of passing on? Baby slipped off light as a shadow, buried and gone. Here's to the baby she got from a barmaid and renamed Creighton to send out the nurse. And Minnie, up to her neck in farming, packing her bags and bound to do better.
Thank you for that reading, Judith. I felt like I was having a private story time with Judith <laughs> in her home. And thank you for it's having good us. It's having a, a, <laughs> an interesting story to tell. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about um, the genesis of this book. How, how did you come to be writing this one? Well, when I came to Melbourne, it was 1968. And of course, I was going to places that were new to me. Early in the 70s, I went to the old Melbourne jail with my kids. And um, there exhibited were 13 to 15 um, yellowing wax death masks of hanged people. Mm. They all showed the hitch up on the left-hand side of the hangman's knot. Um, and among them were, well, there could only have been a maximum of three women. Mm. And um, I noticed the one of this uh, rather puffy, uh, woman. In fact, she was only, I think, uh, 24 or so when she died. Mm -hmm. um, and her maiden name was Minnie Thwaites. She'd married a German waiter. She came to Melbourne at very much the worst time when uh, the depression was so bad and she had aimed to be a dressmaker. I'm not saying she had habits, ingrained habits of working hard but uh, certainly she couldn't gain a living that way mm. and after a bit of thinking she decided to take in babies baby now yes baby farming was a way to gain a living and you got your living by keeping babies either that a girl didn't want because it had been conceived out of marriage yes. or else they were working and needed to be free of children to wow. do that yeah. um now, the on, only way that many could make it work was by getting money for a baby, and often this was money to take the baby on for life. Wow. And it would only be five pounds, ten pounds, something like that. Goodness. And so the obvious idea was that you had to pass this on. Mm -hmm. And there was one way that was sort of popular, and that was to give it to some country person, a farmer, who would want free labour on his farm later on, so wow. maybe he'd bring up a kid. Yeah. Um, anything else was just a stopgap. Mm. Um, and one other thing you could do was get money with the baby, mm. give it to the neighbour to look after for the day, and be vanished at the end of the day. Yeah. You'd be living in a different part of Melbourne, which was already a big place. Mm. and. Um, so, so not, not take the baby, so take the money and run. Come that's on. right, take the money and run. So uh, Minnie has, and her husband when he got out of jail, um, had addresses in half a dozen different suburbs, and with each they had a change of name. Mm -hmm. And some right. of these are very funny. No. De Vere and Seegers, both fairly noble names. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, um, and... Uh, I think the police got wind of them at some point along this track. Finally, they, they got so panicked that they went to Sydney where Minnie bore her second child. Mm. This was a child that was probably the child of her boyfriend, Ted. Uh, yeah. um, she already had a little girl, Gladys. Everybody who knew her said that they never knew her to be as all nasty to kids. She loved kids. Mm -hmm. um, but the babes... The bodies found in the backyard were difficult. Now, the interesting thing about this is that had a baby just died on her, she couldn't have notified the authorities as she should have because she hadn't registered her house for baby farming. Oh, I see. Yeah. So there was a, a trap built into this for yes, her. Yes. So in my ballad, I take the rendering that maybe she didn't kill any baby or Nobody actively killed a baby, yes. but there was a dead body. Yes. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, when she went up for um, trial, uh, the newspapers weren't kind to her. They treated her as a monster. Did they? But when she was condemned to death by hanging, uh, there was a huge petition. Yes, uh, Vida Goldstein signed it. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, the law took its course. 
Uh, so I, I found this a compelling tale because my feeling is that this girl would have been, she would have been in line for help from social services mm -hmm. long before she started this uh, dodgy uh, way of getting of making a living. Yeah. And the times were against her. It's tragic, isn't it? It, it is. It is. And um, I see that you created an opera, a Lindy opera, in 2002. And, yes. Um, so the, the idea, of, because there's some sort of parallels with her story as well, is it something that interests you about? Um, well, yes. The public attitude towards what happens to babies uh, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, very sentimentalized, it's very hearty, um, but it doesn't um, have a very good grip on the possible emotions and motives and situation yes. of women in the case. And, and course, uh, they, were, they were way uh, astray on that. With so of course we're talking about Lindy Chamberlain here. Um, if you're not from Australia, Lindy Chamberlain was the uh, Dingo Ate My Baby um, story mm. that um, has been become quite famous and so um, Judith created an op called Lindy in 2002 and, and so talk to me a bit about your libretto kind of work. Um, well um, Moya Henderson the Sydney composer had tried Gwen Harwood and I don't think I don't know why but Gwen didn't quite see it as her kind of thing mm. and Moya came to me and I saw it very much as something I could feel about because um, quite clearly uh, um, public opinion, but even more important, police opinion, was against Lindy and yes. demonised her from the beginning. Right. And it was perfectly clear uh, that it was a disaster which had happened to her and her husband. Mm -hmm. uh, they had other children to attend to. This baby was in a tent. The dingo wandered by and there was meat. Um, and it dragged the baby off. And the Aborigines knew what had happened. Um, and they tracked uh, the particular dingo. Um, the first coroner knew what had happened. It was after that that it began to go wrong. Was it? And it got into the Supreme Court in the Northern Territory. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got condemned to long imprisonment. She did, in fact, spend about 10 years in prison. Um, wow. And uh, this... Um, it was only when the matinee jacket was found, um, which uh, had come off the baby when, when it was eaten or whatever happened to it, uh, that finally she was released. Um, and, well, the, the, the newspapers were appalling. You uh, you read them day after day and wondered how public opinion could go like that for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, it's rather the same, uh, in, uh, but in a government-inspired way, not the police, about asylum seekers. So anyway, these, uh, this story um, appealed to me and I wrote a, a libretto. I was very inexperienced, of course. It was a libretto in short bursts of lyric stuff and... Um, using quite a lot of the actual words that had been said at any point. Was that your and, first one that you've done? Before? Oh, yes, I have done another one. Right. I uh, Obviously, if you try a genre once, you should do it more times. Um, uh, Where was it staged? At the Sydney Opera House in 2002. Wow. We went along oh and in the, in the audience was Ruddock, who was, of course, at that time the Minister for Immigration and presiding over the first um, the detention centres. Mm -hmm. He tried to approach me and I turned my back on him. Okay. And um, I'm not ashamed of that. I think that uh, Ruddock, Morrison, Dutton are an appalling set of people and history will serve them right. Um, but... Uh, what was that experience like, having your opera in the opera house? Oh, it's fascinating. Oh Joanna Cole was absolutely marvellous as really? Lindy. Yes. I thought it was a part that needed reprising, needed redoing, and I hope sometime to hear it. Yes. It requires um, a fi very fine soprano. Moya was fairly demanding mm -hmm. uh, with her setting. Um, mm. And some of the tunes still really get me. Uh, they come back to me. 
I don't know that it's a difficult opera. Um, do, do the recordings and um, there's a there's an ABC this? there's an ABC recording. Okay, and, and um, printed music CD. and um, is there printed music and words as well? With the well? CD, there's booklets. Okay, fantastic. And um, gives a text. Well, I'll, I'll see if I can hunt out the link for you guys and pop it down below as well, so you can check that out. And also, of course, we're going to have uh, the Hanging of Meathwaites in our bookshop as well. I'll also place the link for you to check that out too. Mm. So um, that will just be down below there for you. And it's just, just such a delight to be able to talk to you today, Judith, and thanks for having me in your house. Mm. <laughs> Was there anything else that you wanted to tell our audience? Oh, no. I think there are a lot more stories out there to be told, mm. and quite a lot of them are about women who haven't uh, received the publicity because they were merely uh, wives and mothers. Mm. Yeah, well, hopefully that's changing, you know, and uh, I hopefully think so. through the Girls on Care YouTube channel, we can help to get some of these stories out as well. And um, yeah, mm. so thank you so much. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.